Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. This next video, I, I was going to do this video on building the tabletop dynamometer. However, then it dawned on me I really should quickly go over torque, RPM, and horsepower and how they're all interrelated. Uh, this is one of those topics that I see a lot of confusion about and uh, I really thought I had a... I think I can clarify it and make it make sense if you're a little fuzzy on it. And uh, if you're not fuzzy on it, hey, that's great, awesome. But I was fuzzy on it for a long time because I kept hearing things from my motorhead buddies like, you know, torque is what gets you going and horsepower is what keeps you going and things like that. That when you really look at those kinds of explanations, they're, they're really meaningless. There isn't any real understanding there. And so I think I've figured out why it's confusing. So let me show you that and hopefully this helps you understand it and uh, for those that need help understanding it. Um, first off, what does an engine do? Basically an engine does work. It lifts water or it pushes a car down the road or it pushes a ship. It's doing something that a human muscle used to do or a horse used to do. And so the only thing an engine's really doing is doing work that otherwise we'd have to do ourselves. And so let's define work because this is kind of a fundamental concept and it's easy to be confused about it. So let's start off with this definition. It's work is a force acting through a distance. Now, if you're a mathematician, you might be able to look at that and go, dude, I totally get that. I understand it. <laughs> but for somebody like me, who's not a mathematician, I kind of go, oh, yeah. Um, okay, sure. Yeah, if you say so, man. Uh, anyway, so here we go. Let's explain what it actually is. It is literally a force applied for a certain distance. So we got our little miner here. He's got his bucket full of coal and he's pushing his little cart. Now this isn't to scale. This is actual size just so that the numbers work out. Now he's going to push with his, his little cart with one pound of force. So he's pushing one pound of force. And let's say he goes one foot. One foot. He has actually done one foot pound of work. And we'll get to torque in a minute because that's where things get confusing. So one of the things we want to look at on this is that this is a product. This is the amount of force that is applied times the distance that the force was applied for. So if he pushes his little cart for one foot, that's one pound of force times one foot. That equals one foot pound. Now you'll see this written all kinds of different ways. You'll see it written like foot divided by pound. That's wrong because you're not dividing feet by pound. You'll see it the other way, pound feet. Once again, this is not division. These are actually wrong. Okay, this is a product of how hard you pushed and how many feet you did it for. Now if you're in metric, the, power, the, the force is going to be a newton, the distance is going to be a meter. So you're going to have a newton meter of work. Same exact concept, just different, just different uh, units used to describe it. So, seeing as this is a product here, if we have, let me just ramble a little bit here. If he, if he pushes with two pounds and goes two feet, that's four foot pounds. If he goes, if he pushes with a hundred pounds and he goes a hundred feet, that's a thousand foot pounds. No, it's 10,000 foot pounds. <laughs> See, I never said I was a mathematician. Anyway, so there we go. That, that's really what we're looking at. And that number gives us this unit that we call a foot pound. That's, so this, here's our unit over here, foot pound. And hopefully you can see that, like I say, this is a product. I don't want to keep repeating that, but maybe I should. I don't know. I'm just getting into the hang of this thing anyway, so just bear with me. I'll get better, or maybe I won't. Who knows? Okay, so we've got this. Force acting through a distance in foot-pounds. Now, of course, we've all heard about torque. You know, you got to torque your cylinder heads to, you know, 70 foot-pounds or 90 foot-pounds or whatever it is. Well, here we're talking about a force applied to a lever pivoting around an axis, okay? This is also called a foot-pound. However, 
And it is also, by the way, it is also a multiplication. You'll often see it in a book like this, foot-pound. That's really not right. It is just like work in that it is the length of the lever times the amount of force put on the lever. So if it's a 10 foot long lever and you put one pound of force on it, that's 10 foot pounds. If, you, if it's a you know, one foot long lever and you put 10 pounds of force, that's 10 foot pounds. Same deal, but a foot pound of torque is not the same thing as a foot pound of work. And when I see other people explain this, they never, they never distinguish between the two things, that this is a fundamentally different concept than this up here. And so let's go ahead and keep going here because hopefully I can get this video done in under, under 20 minutes. And so, okay, our next thing we've got to figure out is, okay, we have this concept of linear work. You know, the little guy pushing the mining cart, or quite frankly, your engine pushing your car down the road. Same deal, just bigger numbers. And so then we've got torque. And what we're going to get to here real quick is how we get to horsepower. Now, horsepower is a measure of the amount of work an engine can do. And so horsepower is defined a couple of different ways. Um, the most common, and, and the one we're going to use here, is a, a horsepower, maybe I should put this over here, equals 550 foot-pounds per second. Or if you multiply that by 60, you'll get 33,000 foot-pounds per minute. Now, seeing as we're all motorheads here, or at least I am, um, we're going to use this one because normally we measure the RPM of our engines in revolutions per minute. So this is the, this is the factor we want to use, this 33,000 foot-pounds per minute. So how does torque figure into this? Well, this is where things get confusing because you have two different things that are called the same, they have the same name, but they're two fundamentally different concepts. So, this is where the magic happens. And we're going to get to another formula. I'm going to go ahead and throw it up here real quick, and then we'll derive it and get to that formula. Here's one I know you all have seen. It's horsepower equals torque, which I'm just going to call T, times RPM divided by 52, 52. Everybody's seen that, but what does it mean and where did it come from? We're going to get to that. Imagine you have your one foot lever. We're going to do that because that, that makes it, this makes it very easy. And you're going to put one pound of force on our one foot lever. Now, if our lever goes all the way around like this, our little angel sits out there and she pushes on the end of the lever with one pound of force, goes all the way around. Okay, well, how far has this distance actually gone? Because that's going to actually tell us our work. So that's pretty easy. That's just two pi r. Well, we know r is 1 in this case. We know what 2 is. Pi in this case is going to be, we're going to use a slightly longer version of pi because we need the precision here. So here we're at, we actually have, um, we're going to call pi, well, we're going to be 2 times 3.14, which is the part of pi we all know, 159. I know that seems to be taking it out a little further, but this doesn't quite come out exactly right unless we have that extra set, that extra three digits on pi. And then, of course, we've got our radius. And so what does this come out to? This is pretty simple. We can all do this. I can't do it in my head, but uh, we can do this. It comes out to... <laughs> I'm going to have to pause for a minute. All right, I got my... truck. Man, check out this... this this poor calculator has survived being in my shop for way too long. All right, 3.14159 times 2. That gives us our whole thing here, right? Because we, we've got, that's just 2, and then R is just 1, so we can just call that 1. Okay, so we got 6.28318. I should have been able to remember that because it's a 283 with a 318 stuck on the end of it. <laughs> anyway, 
Uh, I'm just trying to be silly. All right, so if we look at this, this has gone 6.28318 feet for one revolution at one foot pound of torque. So if it's one foot pound of torque or one pound of force, one foot lever, which is one foot pound of torque, one revolution, that gives us 6.28318 foot pounds of work. So every time this goes around, this is how many foot pounds of work it makes. So basically what we're gonna do here, seeing as we're using a one le foot lever and basically one foot pound of torque, we're gonna find out we're just basically deriving a conversion factor as to what one horsepower is for this 33,000 foot pounds per minute. Remember, that's one horsepower. I should write that as one horsepower. So all we got to do here is take our 33,000, divide it by 6.28318, and guess what's going to pop out? I know some of you already are going, oh, I know what this is going to be. I know what it's going to be. And you're right. That is what it's going to be. 33, oh man, 33,000 divided by 6.28318. Look at that. 5252.11. So that is where our 5252 52 comes from. Okay, so let's dig into this formula here. Because all that stuff we did with work, defining work and defining torque was simply so we could derive this formula here. Because that's the one we're always going to use. And it allows us to tell what the horsepower is going to be if we know the torque and the RPM, or what the torque is if we know the horsepower and the RPM. And so one of the things that you always see mentioned is that when you're dynoing an engine, for example, that torque and horsepower are always equal at, guess what, 5,252 RPM. And it's pretty easy to see why that is. If we remember our age-old high, um, high school math here, 52, 52, let's see here, HP. All right, now, if you remember in high school, or maybe in grade school, if you were in, if you were in on a college track, which I certainly wasn't. If this top, if this numerator, that's the top for the non-mathematicians of us, um, is connected with a multiplication, we can cancel. We can cancel these two things out. Boom, boom. Now you can clearly see that, for instance, if we have one horsepower, it's going to be one foot-pound of torque. And we know from this earlier stuff, one foot-pound of torque at 5252 RP, RPMs is one horsepower. And so by canceling this out over here, that's weird. I, I wound up with a different accent there for a second. <laughs> Who knows where that came from? One of those long dead brain cells. Maybe it's still twitching a little in my skull somewhere. Either way, so that's how we get to that. And you can see one horsepower, one foot-pound of torque, we can cancel that 52.52, torque and horsepower equal. And this, is, this holds true no matter what the engine is. If this is 400 horsepower, it's going to be making 400 foot-pounds of torque in order to do that at 5,252 uh, 52 RPMs. That's the only RPM it works at. But that's why on a dyno chart, when you see, you know, the torque starts out and the torque starts to taper, taper down and the horsepower starts to come up and then they cross, right, at 52.52. That is why that happens. And this is pretty much it. This is, hor this is torque and horsepower and RPM. There is nothing more to this. Uh, if people are trying to add other things, it's a fundamentally simple concept. The only thing that I ever found confusing about it was that work and torque are both referred to as a foot pound, but they are fundamentally different concepts. And so with that, I will sign off. I will once again humbly ask you to subscribe to my channel because I'm trying to trying to grow it, and uh, you know, drop a like, drop a comment, drop a question uh, if there's something you want me to see, you want to see me derive or whatever on on a board. But really, the classroom part of this isn't really what I'm doing on this channel, at least not initially. So the next video, 
we'll be building the tabletop dynamometer. And on that, I decided to use a used swamp cooler motor, which we'll rebuild in the process because the bearings are shot in it. And uh, basically using a used swamp cooler motor as an eddy current dyno brake. And this is for little engines. This is for stuff like the solar engine that you saw in my intro video. I'm not going to bolt a blown 454 down to this. <laughs> I mean, trust me, if I had my own real dynamometer, I would be making videos like Richard Holder makes, but not yet. So anyway, okay, have a great day, guys. Thanks for, thanks for checking out my video, and uh, I will see you next week. Take care. Have a good one.